just a short, well, maybe not so short addendum to the Endenstar AD407 digital microscope. I received some comments on the review of that thing, yeah, card link with questions. So CA asked, uh, it saves configuration or need to reconfigure all again after powering on. Uh, easy enough to test, we will do that. And then Jim Quinn asked, uh, yeah, asked, <laughs> instead of using a ruler, please use some graph paper or a grid of a stage micrometer. No, I don't have a micrometer, uh, yeah. Uh, but I bought some graph paper, we will use that. Also, suggest you cut the polarizing sheet into discs to mount in the lights. And yeah, indeed, <laughs> I got some linear polarization film for that purpose. Uh, yeah, this will require some experimenting and will take a little bit longer. So yeah, let's start with the configuration stuff. I won't do that for all settings, but uh, yeah, let's go. I have the remote here and I'm pointing it. Go into the menu and for example, uh, hey, go into the menu. <clears throat> yeah. Same problem as always. And yeah, I think we can set the resolution to full HD 30p. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that didn't work the first time, but uh, let's try it again. Let's check, did I set it to, yeah. I did set it to full HD 30p. And let's crank up the exposure to, yeah, let's say plus one. Yeah, you see it's uh, getting brighter the picture because, uh, yeah, higher exposure, of course. And then let's go out of the menu again. Okay, yeah, uh, it's it's not, yeah, uh, watch the review again uh, with the remote uh, issues. And uh, now we can maybe uh, zoom in. Uh, do it this way. To a factor of two. Okay, and now I can cycle the power. Welcome. Okay, so uh, obviously zoom is uh, trying to do it here. The zoom is not working. Ah, no, oh, wrong buttons. Uh, obviously the zoom resets, uh, yeah, to one, that is no zoom, no digital zoom. And if I go to the menu again, oh, Jesus, this is really resolution. Come on. Uh, we are back to full HD P60 yeah, instead of full HD P30. And my exposure, my exposure, yeah, I'm really trying to flip that here, is back to ah, zero. So no, it doesn't remember any settings. Now I have some graph paper down below here and the distance to the lens, I measured it, including the UV filter is exactly 100 millimeters. And yeah, I will do uh, give you a short uh, recording of uh, yeah, what that actually looks yeah, recorded. Yeah, that should be enough. Can I switch that off again, please? Again, off. Okay, thank you very much.
Now we come to uh, using the polarization film and uh, yeah, if I put it in front here of the LCD screen, uh, that's not what the viewer asked in his comment, but uh, just to give you an introduction to polarization, light polarization, if I turn it, you see a slight, a very slight change in brightness and uh, that change is so ever slight because this is of course a cheap LCD display. Uh, let's try that on a notebook. In front of a better quality LCD screen you will see this effect is much more dramatic. When I turn that here, okay, it's almost black and this is a, uh, yeah, quite good polarization film. So uh, it claims, uh, yeah, uh, to do polarization of uh, about 99.4 whatever percent, 99.5 percent. So yeah, this is almost black. And um, yeah, I need to do another video about that uh, polarization and so maybe if you're interested uh, yeah, in how LCD screens work, light polarization and the stuff, uh, yeah, leave a comment. Anyway, uh, the viewer asked us to uh, me, uh, yeah, to make a cutout and uh, to use polarized light, yeah to uh, illuminate our object, which you cannot see uh, at the moment. So I will just do that. So I glued on some of that polarization film with Loctite yeah, to one of my LED lights. The other is unchanged and I will not use it. And I can even, yeah turn it by 90 degrees. Yeah, and we will see if there is any effect. I'm only using the light with the polarization film in front to illuminate my object and uh, now we have a look at the screen and I will also do a capture. Yeah. Okay, uh, with polarization and uh, yeah, I will start capturing now, hopefully. Yeah. So there's not much to see and I'm turning now the polarization film in front of the lens by 90 degrees slowly. And we see basically nothing changes. Huh. Oh well. So just putting one polarization filter here on the light really didn't do anything. And uh, that's because <laughs> the optics in here and the CMOS sensor uh, they don't know about polarization, okay? They don't care how the light is polarized that is going in here. And obviously our object we are looking at uh, is also not caring uh, yeah, about the polarization of the light. Yeah, there are materials out there who, um, who are sensitive on uh, what kind of light they are actually reflecting. But uh, yeah, PCB boards um, are obviously not one of those. Um, but I'm not giving up quite yet. <laughs> I glued some polarization film onto the UV filter and I will screw that in again. And uh, then we have another experiment and see what happens. And now we are getting somewhere. Uh, yeah, I will again turn uh, the polarization film on the LED and we watch what happened here on a capture, which I will try to start now. Try to start. Ah, okay. It started. 
So if I turn the polarization filter, you see there are changes. Okay. And very interesting changes. You see at, at some angles, and I'm trying to get in there on some angles, uh, yeah, you get a little bit of a better contrast. On actually the markings, for example. And also if you watch the, um, can I have a final tip, the metallic stuff here. Yeah, the copper pads and uh, the uh, tint leads here from that chip. They behave a little bit different than the rest of the picture. Yeah, I can almost, almost get rid of all the reflections on the tint parts and the copper parts here. So yeah, that, there's really some room for experimentation, but <laughs> what we basically built here is, um, yeah, a polarization microscope. And uh, yeah, you, you actually need, uh, yeah, I'm stopping the capture now. Oh, no, no, one, one, one remark. There is obviously a difference here between, uh, yeah, uh, the labels and the metallic parts. Yeah, the labels don't seem to change much, but the metallic parts do. And I'm not quite sure, I have, will have to read up on that, but I think that the polarization yeah, of the light coming from our LED through the polarization filter is retained when it's reflected off these metallic surfaces. While obviously that print stuff here destroys the polarization of the light. And so if I, yeah, turn my po uh, polarization filter to a setting where there's almost, where it's basically 90 degrees off to the polarization filter on my objective, on my lens, uh, I can, yeah, tune out all the metallic surfaces and I only see the labels, yeah. Some uh, similar effects here on this uh, plastic surface of the chip. Yeah, I can get that really dark, but uh, yeah, the labels are still here. So, yeah, uh, I don't know, but uh, Jim Quinn might be on to something here. If you want me to go further down into the rabbit hole of uh, light polarization, uh, polarization filters, films, and uh, polarization microscopes, uh, yeah, just let me know in the comments and uh, at some point I might um, come around doing that. Um, till then, huh, bye.